Welcome to another Open Philosophy video. In this video we will be discussing the laws of nature, asking what they are and how they are different from the laws that science gives us. In the last video we discussed the history behind the idea of a law of nature. We found that after 1200 years of observations by Babylonian astronomers, the idea of fixed laws be had become a commonplace in the Middle East. Indeed, Jeremiah uses it as a paradigm for Yahweh's constancy to the people of Israel. The idea enters Greek philosophy via Thales of Miletus. He was the son of Phoenician parents who lived, of course, in the Near East, and moved to Miletus, a Greek colony in Asia Minor. There he conveyed the idea to his fellow Greeks and started Greek philosophy. The Greeks understood the idea of a fixed order in nature in terms of mind. They developed what they called the Logos Principle, the idea that mind ruled nature. During the Renaissance, Galileo and Kepler found mathematical laws which described how nature worked. They concluded that these laws caused the order that we observe in nature. Galileo had investigated the effects of gravity on Earth with falling bodies and projectile motion. Kepler had investigated the orbits of the planets, developing his famous three laws of planetary motion but these two investigations were not linked because it was assumed that the matter on earth was subluminary matter and the matter in the heavens was celestial matter a completely different kind of matter and therefore there was no reason to assume that the same laws applied to both this gap was bridged by newton who decided that he could explain the orbit of the moon by the same gravitational principles that explain the falling of bodies here on Earth. Thus Newton established his great insight that the same laws apply on Earth and throughout the universe. So what are these laws? Plato suggested that the world was made of numbers, is he right? If we look to contemporary philosophers for answers, we find little help. Their main concern is the laws as science uses them. That is to say, they're concerned with our descriptions of what happens in nature, the laws of science. But our descriptions assume that there is something that is being described, the laws as they exist in nature. When we turn to contemporary philosophy for a discussion of the reality of the laws, we find very little, if any, help. Often when we want to know what something is, we start by asking what it's made of. So, what are the laws of nature made of? What, for example, is the law of conservation of energy made of? Well, it's not made of atoms or quarks. It's not made of electric or gravitational or other fields. In fact, it's not made of anything material. It is specifically immaterial. That is to say, it's not made of matter. So this leads us to the position taken by contemporary philosophers. It's made of thought. That is to say, it exists only in our mind. But again, this won't work because it is a description of reality. We did not invent the laws. We discovered them in nature. Before there were human beings, billions of years ago, at the Big Bang and until the advent of human evolution, the laws operated. They couldn't operate if they depended on our thoughts, so obviously they're not made of thoughts. There is some reality which is immaterial and which guides natural processes. This reality is the laws of nature. Of course materialists hate the notion that there can be something specifically immaterial in reality. They will argue that the laws of nature are actually properties of matter. 
Let's examine this claim. Certainly, the laws of nature are not properties like other properties. Something like color, for example, can take on different values. Some things can be red, others blue or green. Something like length can be longer or shorter. We can weigh more or we can weigh less. Every property that we know about can take on different values. But the laws of nature are universal. They apply equally to all matter. Therefore, they are not properties like any other properties. Secondly, if we consider modern cosmology, we don't find that the laws depend on matter. Rather, we find that matter depends on the laws. At the Big Bang, the laws are in operation, and as a result of that operation, matter emerges. Thus, the laws are logically prior to matter. The immaterial is primary, the material is derivative. That is the lesson of modern cosmology. Next time, we will continue our discussion of the laws of nature. We will consider Plato's suggestion that the world is made of numbers, and we will go on to discuss the topic of logical propagators, the genus into which natural laws fall. Until then, thank you for your time and attention. Thank you.